Hey guys, so in this video you're going to be watching me trying something completely new to this channel, which is building a robot arm. Specifically, we're working with the Robot Studio S0101 robot arm, which hooks into the Hugging Face little robot library and code. So the idea is you have two arms, a follower and a leader. The follower arm is a robot arm with a claw on the end, and the leader arm essentially has a handle with a trigger that you can use to control it. So you can move the leader arm yourself, you know, wherever you want, and the follower arm will follow your every move. So there's the same arm with different ends attached. The whole purpose of the system is to make it so that people like me and you can experiment with real world robotics using machine learning. I think I found this on Twitter because I was following the CEO or the owner of Hugging Face. So the idea is use the leader arm to teach the follower arm how to do tasks like picking things up, placing them, whatever you want. So right now you're watching me unpackage the robot arms themselves. And then I'm going to be diving into learning how to assemble them using the little robot documentation, calibrating it, and then making it do stuff. So at the end, if you watch all the way through, you're going to see that I made a robot that can control a laser pointer for my cat to play with. So I hope this will be entertaining. I've never done anything like this, something different, because I usually do coding videos. But, but we're going to be learning together and seeing what kind of cool things that we can create. So I hope you enjoy, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. All right, so I've got the robots built. It was pretty tricky. Um, just... Yeah, it's very hard to put the parts in there because it's all 3D printed, so it's very tight. But I got it built, took a few hours. Um, I got me a Prime bottle so we can uh, be a power user right now. So right now we're gonna set up the, what we have to do now is configure the motors. So basically for each of the joints of this robot, there's motors on each joint. There's about, there's six per robot. So the one on the left is the, uh, the, the follower arm. And the one on the right is the leader arm that you can use to train it, to teach you how to do things. So it's got like a trigger on it, basically like a handle. So now I'm gonna figure out how to connect to the different motors with the uh, motor boards and like, you know, set it up. So I have to install a Python environment. I have to clone the repo. So I'll do that next and see what happens. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to the documentation on Hugging Face for the robot. And what it tells me to do first is clone the repository. So I'm doing that. And so I just got to install some packages as well using the Conda environment that it's, that it's telling me to activate. So now after this, after I set up the development environment, I'm going to have to figure out how to actually connect to the robot arm and make it do stuff. All right, I have plugged it into the wall. Um, I only have an extension cable for one thing, so we only have one arm to work with right now. Um, we got my prime still. Um, so look, it's plugged in, we got power. It's very small, it's crazy how small it is. Um, so the idea is, and I only know this because I saw another person do it, is what you're supposed to do now, I guess, is literally turn this on, you connect it to your computer with USB, and then uh, you connect one by one each motor into this to configure it essentially. So I'll be doing that next and we'll see what happens. Um, because it wasn't, it wasn't in the docs anywhere. The docs had no information on this for some reason, on this whole process that I'm doing now. Maybe it's obvious to some people, but this is like supposed to be a beginner project. So maybe I'm just blind. I don't know, but yeah. So this part's actually super interesting. So it tells me to run the script so that we can identify the USB port for the servo modem. So it told me to plug it in and then it's gonna scan the USB ports on my computer. And then when I remove it, it then will identify it. I didn't really understand how that was happening, but after thinking about it, it's pretty cool. So because I plugged it in, it scanned it, and then I unplugged it, it was able to see which one changed. And so that's how it's able to identify the USB port that uh, the motor bus is plugged into. So really smart. So now I'm gonna copy the USB port identifier that it found for me and copy it to a, just a you know text file because then I can refer to it later on. Because anytime that I need to connect to that specific robot arm, it's with that USB port that it was identified with. So I'll save that and then later when I run the scripts, I can use that one that I found. So now what I have to do is configure it so that each of the motors, the six motors that are in the arm, are configured to the motor bus of that I just connected to. So that's what I'll be doing next, is by connecting each one to the motor bus. And as I connect each one, I'll press enter so that it knows in the motor bus which one is which. That's how it's going to configure it. It's really cool. So this is what it looks like the uh, motor connected to it. So it's only that one for the, I guess that's called the, uh, the wrist flex motor. So connects into the little board and then I just press enter on the computer and it uh, registers it essentially. So I'm doing that one by one. 
so yeah, like I said, I'm just connecting each motor. They all have names one by one to the motor bus, which is then connected to my computer still. And the script here is going to save whatever motor ID is in that system in the motor bus so that when I later on connect to the full system all together, uh, it'll know which one is which. So the, the robot arm can move properly. All right, so I got them all configured and then I had to daisy chain each motor to one another. So just connect them all together all the way down to the last one, which is now connected to our so servo driver thingamajiggy. So now I'm going to calibrate it and we're going to find out what happens. <laughs> Up, turn. The fuck? Wait. Do I need to follow that exactly? Oh, oh wait, okay. I think I don't need to follow that exactly. I think it just wants to know like how far it can move. Yeah, so I was struggling to figure out how you're supposed to calibrate this thing. There's a video that you just saw that shows how to move the robot in a very specific way. And I thought I was supposed to just copy that one to one. But the way that calibration works is that I found out is you basically just want to move all the motors of the robot as far as you can in every direction. So all the degrees of motion that are available so that later when you're controlling the robot via code, it knows where it can go. So that's why you can see in the video, it's moving it on each motor joint all the way left, all the way right and, and such. That will control the boundaries of which each motor can later be moved to. Now, something else I later found out is that you don't want to move it too far because that means that later when you're controlling the robot, it can move to that range because you calibrate it to that ability. So you don't want to do that because then it can move in really, really radical ways that you don't want or expect. All right, so update. I calibrated the robot and the next step in the tutorial was to start setting up the uh, the leader arm so we can teleoperate it. But I'm, I'm kind of, I don't want to do that. I just want to make it move. You know, I spent all this time at least an hour setting this up, so I want to make it actually do stuff. So right now I'm using cursor, and I got cursor to scan the repository to understand how to use the robot API, and it built me a script that can connect to one of the motors, because we're just doing a simple test here to open it. So let's run it and try it out. So it should open the gripper. There it is. Nice, that is, that is awesome. And this isn't the first time I tried it. It actually did fail and it went it went haywire to say the least. <laughs> so I had to like unplug it and do a power cycle. It was crazy. But this is super cool. And using cursor, like it made it so easy. You know, I didn't have to like learn how to do it all myself. So awesome. So now what I'm gonna do is just see what I, what else I can make it do. And uh, we'll see what we do from there. Okay, so what I wanna do now is I gave it my cat's laser pointer and he loves it. He's looking for it right now. So I'm gonna make it so that the wrist um, motor spins just so it can do a circle on the ceiling or something like that, just as a proof of concept. Cause I think instead of doing AI right away um, and using the other arm to make, like train it essentially, I wanna make like a deterministic program that can make it do something cool, like spin the laser for my cat. So I don't have to play with my cat. So I'm gonna try that, see what we can do. Let's make a another simple script that can move the wrist uh, number five motor around to um, make the laser pointer. Don't move the gripper since it's holding something. That's so cool. It says make sure your cat is ready and then press enter to start. Alright, do you ready boy? Oh, we got an error. So it's identifying what the error was and fixing the script. Sounds like an alien. He's interested. The laser's not turned on, but it's moving. He's interested. What do you see, Dewey? You like it, boy? Oh. Oh, it's trying a different pattern. So that was, number one was pattern one, slow side to side motion. Now it's doing figure eight motion. It's not really doing anything different though. 
I think it's, so I think what we need to do is we know it can control the wrist now, which is good. And we're keeping the gripper closed so it doesn't lose the laser pointer. But now we need to do this one, which is motor number four to make it go up and down. So I think with those two motors combined, we can probably do some sort of circular motion. And then eventually we'll point it downwards on the floor so my cat can like watch it. So let's see. All right, my fish brain cat is looking up at the laser on the ceiling. So he sees it there. <laughs> so um, now we've got, you know, six mind blowing patterns and a total show time of 5.5 minutes of pure cat entertainment. Let's run it and see what happens. Three, two, one, go. Holy mo All right, that was not um, expected. So my genius girlfriend helped me set up this little thing. It grips it to the table essentially, so it can't move because it's really top heavy. So I'm gonna run it again. I took the laser out. I forgot to put it back in. Let me let me put that back in. All right, here we go. Look at that pattern. Whoa. There it is on the ceiling. So it's a very like crazy pattern. That's much too. <laughs> That's much too like fast and like wide for my cat to follow. He's a little slow, but the concept is working like perfectly. It really looks like a dinosaur to be honest with you. Very cool though. They're up on the counter right now going crazy. All right, so it coded the script, and so I saved the position, and now should go to that position when I start the script and then do it from there. So let's run it and see what happens. Okay, press enter. Holy shit. That was crazy how fast it was. A little scary. So it's a little slow for their taste. I mean, the little guy doesn't mind, but Dewey, he's more of a hunter. He likes to prowl, you know? So we need a faster mode for him. Cool thing though, is that this robot came with a camera so we can put a camera on top of it. Oh, we can put a camera on top of it. And um, it'll, I think I'm gonna make it so that based on the position of the cat using a computer vision, we can move the laser away from that position so the cat can chase it. All right, so this is the final iteration of the program for now. So I made it so that it can use the bottom motor. So it has turning capability now. So it's able to do like a figure eight and like just make circles, kind of circular motions. So yeah, that's pointed towards the ground. It saves the initial position of it when it starts. And then when it's, when it's done, it goes back to that initial position. So a lot of improvements, but overall, I think this is really cool. The cat seems to like it. So I think in terms of improvements, we can add a camera onto it and make it more dynamic, make it go faster. So far the AI built six modes into it. So this is probably the most basic mode. It just, it's pretty slow, but really freaking cool. This is my first time doing anything with robotics at all. So I did kind of cheat, I guess you could say using AI, but I built the robot arm according to the instructions and set it up and then AI helped me. So learned a lot. I'm going to study the code a little bit, a little bit more so I can understand a little bit better, but very cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully this was somewhat entertaining. Peace. Say bye, Beanie.